Let's start with an opening question. That's for each and every one of you. Uh, uh, and also now you heard Yevgeny, but if you just sit down and think for a while, uh, in five words, try to tell to yourself, this is partnership. This is what I understand with partnership. Write it down. And then in a minute, you will turn to your, to your neighbor and uh, you will talk two and two or share with, with each other. Please, what is partnership? Five words, not more. Thank you, thank you. Okay, when I looked, uh, when I looked this up uh, for illustrations for it, it was striking that a whole number of the illustrations when you Google a, a word like partnership are about hands. Most of them, I would say, about hands, shaking hands, making some sort of a network with hands, building with hands, um, laying his hands upon was on, on some of them as well. Um, saying, telling us something about in, an impression of partnership as a relational, I would say. It's something to do with human beings. Um, something to do with, something to do with a, a coming to agreement with each other. Um, and, um, and then the second thing that struck me while looking into the internet is the same as Yevgeny used, a whole lot of jigsaw puzzles <laughs> uh, being, uh, being combined, uh, like you have down here as well. Um, and the last one I saw was a number of chains, telling us something about uh, being uh, being held together, knit together, and not that, uh, and that partnership is never stronger than its weakest link, which is important, of course, in, in, in partnership thinking. And I also think that you say that partnership, and we can even take it further down and say partner, which must derive from part, saying that each and every one of us are only parts. We are parts of a bigger whole, uh, which I find very important. These questions about partnership uh, and, um, and collaboration, and there are different words of it, uh, but partnership and uh, connections, global connections, for those of us who have been to gatherings with Evangelical Alliance or with the uh, Lausanne movement or here as well, last year Phil Butler was here, he is everywhere uh, when we talk about connections um, because he works on global connections. And this is a, this is a very hot topic actually uh, in missiology. While coming to uh, a document like the Cape Town Commitment, um, one of the six strategic questions in the end, in the second half of the Cape Town Commitment, is about partnership. It's this uh, one, number 2F, partnering in the body of Christ for unity in mission. And with these subtitles, unity in the church, partnership in global mission, men and women in partnership, and theological education and mission. And we will dig into number two of these today. Uh, but. Also for the first one, I would say that is very important because it lays the foundation about the thinking about partnership. We can talk about partnership with, the, with uh, problematizing it. We can uh, use the problematic language on partnership. Oh, do we need to have partnership? Can't we do it on our own? Uh, no, we can't because uh, the Church of Christ is one body. And we stand united um, in the mission that Jesus Christ gave his church. So it's, it is the whole church that is given the whole gospel to go to the whole world, the whole church. So, but then there is some, something of a gospel in it, because it goes back to the unity, not that we only have with each other, but the unity that we have in Christ. So uh, our partnership should mirror, so to say, uh, the, the unity that we have in Jesus Christ. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not an option. It's mandatory to think about partnership. And it's not only for the opening phase of a relationship. While building a relationship, you have got a lasting relationship. 
and the, uh, the contents of the relationship might, um, might uh, differ over the years and over the generations, but there is a lasting relationship once a partnership is established. That is some of uh, the main thing which is, uh, is said with, um, in, in the Cape Town commitment about unity in the church. But then let's go to what uh, it says about the global, the global mission. It says that we stand together as a church, so and so and so, with equality of opportunities to contribute together. And let us lay aside suspicion, competition, and pride, and be willing to learn. <laughs> and while listening to Scott yesterday, uh, about the, the different models around in the world. I, I'm sorry to say, I, it struck me in just in a moment here, wow, do they think like, like that? How can we teach them to think otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> then in a few seconds, uh, I, um, I just realized that, okay, that was a wrong thought because of course it is, how can we learn from each other all the way? Um, yeah. Um, there is a model from uh, Harold Fuller, it, I think it's from around 1980, uh, about, uh, about the development of church mission relations. Um, it might even be said to be, to relate to an older part, pattern of mission, church relationships. Because I think when we go out uh, in new relations today in mission, uh, either coming from the western or the eastern side, this is not the way it starts even. But the older pattern of missions started like this, um, and it has somehow uh, an idealized ending here, because I don't find it always like that. But okay, let, let's just go through it, because we shall use it in a moment. It's uh, from Harry Fuller. Uh, he says that the face, faces... Um, uh, of um, the development in church uh, um, and mission relations uh, very much will have started with a pioneering phase, of course. And then you have the mission and the mission being alone. Starting up, maybe, maybe we, don't, we didn't have a partner. Um, that is different from starting up today, from the 19th century up till today, there will be a big, big difference because we will, we will have potential partners all over. Uh, they didn't. Uh, so we had a pioneering phase where the mission stood by and large alone. Then we entered the parenthood phase, which tended to become too long, I would say, at least from my experience uh, within our mission organization, where the church, so to say, was the baby of the mission. Uh, and we entered into the next, um, next phase, which is called the partner phase, the partnering phase, where the church and the mission, idealistically at least, should stand together as equal equals in a partnership. And then, uh, in the end, we came out with the participant role, where the mission or the church said bid a farewell to the mission or the mission to the church. They split up somehow, but still there was a relation, should be a relation uh, of um, the church being there, the, the mission being there for the church, and even the church being there for the mission, uh, because there is, a, there is um, a lasting relation. Well, this is an old pattern, and we, we'll have a look into it in a moment, while I will say something about what we experienced, in, uh, not least in, um, in Asia. Uh, but just let me uh, come to, I, I got Jörns, uh, who should have this session, uh, his PowerPoint presentation, and I, chose to, I, I picked two of his pictures, uh, because he says something about the necessity of changing how we think about partnership. Uh, because this is a very traditional way. He has been a missionary to Ethiopia for many years, and this has been a traditional way of thinking about partnership. We have a, an African church which should be helped, 
And around that church, there are a whole lot of partners. Stronger partners, weaker partners, not always that, as many as this, but um, a whole lot of partners around the church. Um, but he says that we need to change the pattern of thinking because this will be a sort of helping, helping activity towards the church all the time. The church must be helped and helped and helped and a whole lot of supporters around the church to help it. <coughs> and you get this paternalistic way of thinking uh, and, and behaving. And he says we should rather have a kingdom-related a kingdom-related way of thinking partnership, like the chain which I showed on the, on, on the second picture. Uh, and the African church is one of the links in that chain for building the God's kingdom. So there will be a phase where some of these links are weaker than the others. But the goal all the time must be that we see all the churches and mission agencies as partner for the same kingdom, uh, uh, kingdom mission, building God's kingdom, which I found like a helpful way of, of, of thinking it from, from your, side, your own side. Okay, just some Asian examples, because the organization where I have been working, we have uh, a long-standing relation to some Asian countries, but a shorter history with, with some other of them. We have been in India, uh, and uh, we, uh, uh, we helped them forming a Lutheran church up in the northern part, northeastern part of India. And I often asked myself during my years, years in ministry, uh, it is a lifetime relation, but are we lifetime friends, <laughs> or is it a lifetime asymmetry? Because it seemed to me like 1867, that was the time when we started up. And still they are so dependent, we feel at least, on us. Uh, is this how it needs to be with these long-standing relations? I think this is not some of the problem with some of the long-standing relations. It's hard to break up. And if we break up, what will happen then? Will it fall together? Like a whole lot of things have done, of course. And a whole lot of institutions that we run in India, they are no more. They couldn't be because the church is not strong enough to carry them. But, but does it need to be a lifetime asymmetric relation? Okay, let's go to India, the neighboring countries, where we are in cooperation with three different churches. With two of the churches, they're old churches, and we have been into it for a very long time. And we have managed to withdraw very much from, um, from uh, the church, the daily life of the churches, uh, and the running of the churches, because they should be old enough to stand on their own feet. And then we are in with some social work, uh, in, in the area so of a couple of these churches. But they follow the old pattern, nevertheless, uh, which we saw from Harold Fuller. I'm, I'm not quite sure we, where we are in those phases. I hope we are about to become participants. But it's been a hard time due to buildings, institutions, uh, and fight over this in the churches, and we have had to be into it so that they should not fight each other to death in the churches, over all the values that we have left behind us. But then, so a few years ago, we came in touch with a, uh, with a third church in Bangladesh. And I can't say exactly where it is. I know where it is. I've been there. But it's a sensitive area. But this church in Bangladesh is a younger church. They've never had an international partner. And we approached this church, and we asked, how can we how can we be partners in mission? And they told us the first day, we are not interested in your money. We want to raise money for the salaries of our evangelists, missionaries, pastors, ourselves. They're poor. <laughs> They're poor people. Um, financed by this uh, a handful of rice way of thinking. And we, want, we don't want one single 
um, Norwegian krona to raise buildings, church buildings. We want to raise them ourselves. Okay, then what do you need us for? <laughs> what do you need us for? Okay, how can we pray for each other? How can we exchange information about the spiritual situation in our churches? How can we exchange information about our mission initiatives? And then, of course, they were in need of doing something more in the social area. So they asked us, you can come in with some money, not too much, some money in some of these social projects. Uh, with schools and that, that sort of things. Raising up scholarships so that poor children can go to school, for example. That is our partnership. And this is the church calling to our office week by week by week saying, what shall we pray for the next week? That is also a sort of... We were never a pioneer. We were never a parent. We are a partner somehow. And we will remain a partner. Because there is a deeper unity, which is not about the money. Nepal, Bhutan, I could mention something about them as well. Nepal, United Mission to Nepal. Uh, we are involved there. A whole lot of organizations are involved there. We were not allowed to do any evangelistic or church-like work in Nepal. Until in the 90s, and even then, we should be very careful about doing it. Uh, but then it, uh, it was more possible for the churches to be public in their witness. But we've, we've been there with some social work, and we have seen the churches grow. And then this big organization, United Mission to, uh, Mission to Nepal, had to start thinking about their own future. Shall we, we shall leave it to, we shall leave it to uh, the church here in this country. But we have started a whole lot of big hospitals. And the big Christian hospital on Patan in, in, in Kathmandu, it could not be left with the church. It was too big, so it was left with the state. As for us in Bhutan, we, we were in Bhutan for 30 years, eradicating leprosy. We built of two hospitals. There were only a few handful of Christians at the time in Bhutan. We couldn't leave the hospitals to them, and it was not allowed to be a Christian, so... Anyway, it was not possible. So we built up those hospitals. We left them to, um, we left them to uh, the, the government. But then it came back to us later that we had a good relationship with the government. So now, the later years after we have withdrawn our people from Bhutan, we also are in relation to the country. And we also are in close relation to some of the Christians in the country doing Bible translation work, that sort of stuff. But we must be very sensitive in staying, in staying abroad, in staying away from the country. We, we, we should not be there with our missionaries. It's a much more healthier sort of relation than the old relation which we, are, which we struggle so much with coming away from. Cambodia, let me take that as the last example. Um, we started up in Cambodia in 2006. I was there several times in 2004 and 5, and I discussed with the leader of uh, the Evangelical Alliance in the country, at the time at least, Heng Cheng. Uh, Heng Cheng is a brilliant guy. And I asked him after one of our talks, Heng Cheng, now we need to know from you, I need to hear from you, do you need us in Cambodia? Is there any way we can come in and be a partner with you here in Cambodia? And he said, like a, a people from many countries in Africa never would say, I shall think about it. I shall think about it. I, I loved it. I loved it while, while he said it. And I came back the, the other day, the next day, and, 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 and asked Heng Cheng, have you thought about it? And then he said to me, yes, you're welcome to Cambodia if you want to keep our pace. Our pace. If you want to keep our pace. And that was the starting point of our relation. And I have wondered many times since that, did we follow his advice <laughs> well enough? I'm not quite sure we did. Uh, but we are there, and we try to follow this very wise advice about keeping our pace. Uh, a little bit about partner and power. 
because partnership contains power. And we have a wish that there shall, should be equality, but is that reality? Uh, not always, at least. First, we have two, uh, there are two bullet points. We have a history of paternalism uh, from the Western side. There's no discussion. Uh, but have we left that uh, phase? Mm, I guess we have some cultural attitudes as well. Like I thought when Scott uh, talked yesterday about, oh, they should learn from us. Um, and so we have a way to go, uh, at least from the Western side, to think what can we learn from each other. Uh, Dr. Vashira, who was the General Secretary of Focus Kenya while I worked with the Norwegian IFIS movement uh, 15 years ago, uh, we tried to build up a, a partnership with them and we managed to do. But the first time when I talked to Dr. Vashira down in Kenya, I said, can you send some of your best people to come and be a student team in Norway from Focus Kenya? He said to me, I don't want any sort of ethnic exhibition in Norway. <laughs> Uh, and I said, no, 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 that's not, that's not the issue, uh, Dr. Bashir, I said. Uh, but when I've been in East Africa, and I've seen your prayer life, and I've seen how easily you share the testimony of Jesus Christ with others, we need to be ignited by your prayer life and your zeal for the gospel. Maybe we can give you something back on organization and on parts of leadership building so we can form a partnership, but we need you. It's important to say, we need you because you have the resources. That, we have these two bullet points. Money, wealth. We all understand that. Money is a, it's, it's, it's power. It's so much power in money. And in coming from the financially rich part of the world, on which Norway is nearby the top. So we all understand that that, that might be a problem. But is it a problem only to be a charitable donor? Do you put yourself into a situation of being the one should, who should be cherished and they should be grateful for you? Uh, you should meet in a room and sign a paper of thankfulness. Of course we should. We are polite people. But, um, but the attitude, the Western attitude... What does it demand to be a donor? Do we demand from others um, to be grateful back? How is that? There is power in being a charitable donor. And also the academic educational level, the mastering of several languages, the, uh, the educa educational system of the Western world. It, it gives us power. It gives us power, and there are pitfalls, and we saw that in the last session with also with Yevgeny on several points. This is also addressed uh, in the Lausanne or in, in the Cape Town commitment. Uh, money, of course, freak, frequently corrupts and divides. We should not operate on the principle that those who have the most money have all the decision making power. And then also to the attitudes let us no longer impose or our preferred names, slogans, strategies, methods. We are also good at methods in the West. Let us instead work for true mutuality, for interdependence, for the respect and dignity. This is a great document. This really is a great document. Go home and read it again. Um, so this is focused like this with the Rasan um, in, in Cape Town document. <clears throat> 